Welcome back to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Padilla. Today we're going to talk about type one thinking. I'd like to begin with this meme here and ask you a question. What is going on? What do you think is happening in this scene? Now it doesn't take very long for you to gain quite a bit of information about the situation here. We see that the woman might be mad at the cat. There might be some type of conflict here. And you can understand that easily and effectively. And this whole process happens very, very quickly. You don't have to think deeply about what's going on in the scene to understand what's happening. The other thing that happens is you also make future projections about what will happen next. You might imagine there could be some fight between these uh, woman and a cat or, or something like that. So we gain lots of information easily and automatically. And this is an example of type one thinking. Now, sometimes you'll hear, to, re, hear it referred to as system one or process one. And when you hear the term system um, or process, it makes you think that there's a certain area of the brain that's dedicated to this fast and automatic type of thinking. But that's not true. It's really distributed all over throughout the brain in multiple different networks. So we're going to use the term type one and type two to describe these different types of processes that define how we make decisions. Now we can contrast that to type two thinking, and this is slower and more effortful. For example, take a look at this mathematical problem here, and I want you to try to do this math problem in your mind and try to remember the steps that you took when you're completing the problem. Now, if you can do it, the answer is 408. Now, there's many different strategies you might use to complete this problem, but there is a sequence of steps that you took. And each of those sequences are kind of uh, additive. So you had to effortfully take step one, and then two, and then three, and potentially come to the right answer, or maybe not. So that's to say that type one processing is fast, easy, and automatic. And type two processing is where you have to allocate attention. You have to directly decide to do something. You have to direct your attention to it. And it is slower and more effortful. It requires mental activation to do this second type of processing that we're talking about. It also involves monitoring your behavior. So type two processing as it is at play when you hear a loud sound um, in the background and you ignore that sound and focus on something that you're interested in. So let's think about situations in particular for type one that it can be adaptive. We're going to play this a game. What I'd like you to decide is which of these two types of bananas do you want, A or B? Pretty easy. I would say that most people would choose A. And this type one process, we have evolved this process to help us make these fast decisions that will actually be beneficial for our livelihood and survival. We shouldn't have to think deeply whether we want a, a banana that is going to provide nutrition to us or one that has nutrition that is degraded because it is older. <laughs> um, so we can easily make that decision using type one processing. Okay, how about this one? Would you rather go into the room uh, that is on top A or B? Again, you don't need to know anything about Harry Potter, but it is clear that one room is inviting and warm and another one has potential danger associated with it. So we can use this type one decision-making process to help us identify when there are dangerous scenarios or not. That's why we've developed this very fast decision-making process. Okay, here's another one. Would you rather hang out with a creature uh, in A or B? Most of us would see A and think Baby Yoda is adorable. Of course we want to hang out with Baby Yoda over the porcupine. But if you utilize type two processing, you might realize that Baby Yoda is overpowered. And um, you know if he wants your cookies or something, you're kind of out of luck. So maybe you might actually want to hang out with the por porcupine because it is cute and uh, can be adorable. Okay, so this type one processing that we have really evolved to utilize fast and effectively 
also happens with animals and people from a very early age. Um, babies kind of can sort of quickly start to pick up when things are dangerous or not. Animals as well. When you're walking your dog down the street, a you know, dog might pick up on something scary in the environment and make a very quick decision that they don't want to go in that area. But there are circumstances where type 1 processing can be maladaptive or um, not beneficial for our decisions. So we're going to play a little game here. What I'm going to show you is a sequence of images. And I want you to, in your mind or aloud, say what the image is as soon as you see it. I'm going to give you just a second to say the image. And then I'm going to ask you a question that I also want you to answer as quickly as possible. What's this? And this? And this, and this, and this, and this. What does a cow drink? Now you might have said milk. I would say about 80% of people tend to say milk, but of course cows don't drink milk, they drink water. Now what was happening here? I was able to prime you to think of white objects because I showed you many white objects. And so the activation of uh, like a white structure in your mind became more readily accessible. And so milk was easier to remember than actual water, which uh, would have led you to the right conclusion. So that's to say that the decisions that we make are highly influenced by context. I was able to easily influence what many of you, how many of you responded just by showing you white objects. And this happens throughout our daily lives that our decisions are highly, highly influenced um, by our environment. Okay, other cases where type one processing is also maladaptive is with stereotypes. When we look at these two people here and we have to decide who is the librarian, what tends to happen is that we see someone who fits a stereotype of, li of a librarian, like the woman on the top, and we make assumptions about her make assumptions about her ability, her background, and that's based on what she looks like, her age, what she is doing, and we are more likely to attribute certain qualities to people who fit stereotypes. And of course we know both of these two women could be librarians. How about this one? When we look at this picture, these two pictures, and you're asked who has been to prison, uh, most people know now that Martha Stewart has been to prison, but you can see my point that if you don't know anything about Martha Stewart, she's uh, the woman on the bottom, you wouldn't know that she has been to prison and you would assume that she wouldn't do anything that um, would evoke a, a prison sentence. Uh, where Snoop Dogg on the top, you might make some assumptions about him um, based on implicit biases about his race, about um, kind of just the general elements in the picture, and you would be wrong. That's why biases are so problematic, because we make generalizations about people based on very, very limited information. And the reason that happens is because of type 1 processing. We make fast, automatic decisions that are not always accurate, and it can be very problematic when we do that um, about someone's abilities or qualities. Okay, here's another one. Who is likely a scientist? When I do this in class, almost no one thinks that A, uh, the woman on the top, would likely be a scientist, but she's actually an award-winning um, biologist in Bolivia. And as you can see, it is hard to imagine someone has advanced qualities um, if they don't fit the stereotype of people you think would have such qualities. You really have to do a mental leap to imagine her um, doing, you know, fantastic biology in a lab, which is really a problem. That's why representation matters so much. It shouldn't be that hard for us to imagine that this woman would be a scientist. That's because we haven't seen lots of scientists that look like her. The more scientists that we see, the easier it will be for a type 1 processing to imagine this woman as a scientist. Okay, last one. Who would make a better president? Person on the top or bottom? The person on the top is a fictional character from the West Wing. The person on the bottom is Finland's prime minister. And in this case, we're making assumptions both about the person and their activities. We think that leaders should be strong and decisive. 
and the the way that the photograph is taken on the top sort of suggests that this person um, has those qualities. The man has strong shoulder pads and is uh, holding a briefcase in, a, in the office. If you saw that same individual in a t-shirt and shorts, you wouldn't come to the same conclusion about his abilities. Similarly, the Finland prime minister, she's holding a baby. We don't often associate qualities um, that are important for motherhood with strong leaders, and we really should. So these are all issues with type one processing. Okay, here's a really interesting study where they experimentally manipulated this. And what they did is they took a face and they um, photoshopped the face to look more or less attractive. They photoshopped the one on the left to look more attractive and the right to look less attractive, but it's the exact same face. And then they asked participants, who is smarter? And consistently people would report that the more attractive person was smarter. And of course, <laughs> there's uh, someone's facial features has nothing to do with their intelligence. But we make assumptions that can sometimes be entirely unrelated to the abilities of, of a person. And they did this with female faces as well. Same photo, just photoshopped to be more or less attractive. And people believe that the woman on the left would be smarter than the woman on the right. Okay, so some of these limitations of type 1 processing is that there's limited understanding of logic or statistics when we're making fast, quick decisions. We tend to not focus on statistical information or data. It can't be turned off. By default, we're using type 1 processing. Every decision we make is a type 1 process at first, and then we have to override that or kind of use additional effort to activate type two processing. And it is, out, is easily controlled by outside forces, as we will learn through the entire duration of this course. Key points from this lecture is that type one processing is uh, fast, easy, automatic, has limited understanding of logic and statistics, is easily controlled by outside forces. And type two processing allocates attention, meaning that we have to focus on certain information to think deeply about it and it is slower and more effortful.